Welcome to Petite View Crafts episode 6. I'm recording here today from Los Angeles on July 1st, 2016. I'm recording a little bit earlier this week um, because I'm actually road tripping up to San Francisco as soon as I'm done recording this podcast. Um, for new viewers, thank you so much for joining me. This is a video podcast about knitting, spinning, weaving, and all the crafty things that I get myself into. And for returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back. It really means the world to me that anyone wants to watch me talk about like the dorky things that I get myself into. So for today, I will be talking about my wonderful trip to the Griffin Dye Works retreat. I have some new stash, some works in progress, and a finished object. And I will also be talking about my plans for the tour of the fleece. Let's get started. So first up, is my trip to the Griffin Dye Works retreat. It was hosted at Lake Arrowhead Ranch. Um, Lake Arrowhead is about two and a half hours from me. Um, I live on the west side of LA. Um, so Lake Arrowhead is like up in the mountains about northeast of where I live. Luckily, I didn't have to drive, so I had a ton of knitting time in the car. Um, I rode up with my other guild mate and friend, um, Jesse. If you're watching Jesse, hi! Yeah, it was really, really nice to get up out of the city. Um, I haven't seen so many trees in such a long time um, living on this side of LA. It actually really makes me sad, so it was it was really nice to get out of the city. Um, the site was very, very uh, wooded. <laughs> um, there was some bugs, I got a couple bites, um, and mosquitoes tend to love me. Um, but I don't think I got mosquito bites. I think they were biting flies, I'm pretty sure, because I killed one. And it was a little bit traumatizing, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but oh my goodness, this retreat, it was so, so incredible. Being surrounded by passionate people is like one of the most amazing things. I, I said the same thing about like Vogue Knitting Live, but this retreat, it's a lot more um, inclusive. A lot of the people know each other and it's a lot more of like a of a family atmosphere. Um, everyone, you know, like kind of watches out for each other. Um, there's some older ladies there, of course. So like, you know, everyone was like making sure everyone stayed hydrated, you know, make sure everyone put on sunscreen, etc. It was just, oh, I can't get over how wonderful everyone was. I was a little bit nervous about going because I can be a little bit shy and I thought I only knew Jesse, who I was riding up with. But it turns out a lot of my um, spinning guild members went. And I did meet a lot of new crafty people, including the wonderful indie dyer Tria from Material Culture Fiber Arts. Classes there are small. Um, like, I think the biggest class I took only had six, seven people. The teachers are also attendees of the retreat. So, like, you get a lot of time with the teachers themselves. And it kind of breaks down that wall of, like, oh, it's the teacher. It's it's a lot more of relationship building and you feel a lot more comfortable asking them questions even outside the classes um, if you have any questions or anything like that. Yeah, it was just really, really nice meeting everyone, talking to people, hearing kind of the stuff they're passionate about. Another great thing about this retreat is it's not just knitting or spinning focused. It kind of has a they kind of have classes that range across the board. I also really enjoyed this retreat because it introduced you to so many other crafts, not just like knitting and spinning. Um, they had everything from sewing, uh, crochet, tablet weaving, um, of course, so much dyeing, um, both acid and natural dyes, um, stamp making. It's, it's just such a wonderful place to be introduced to new crafts that you might not have heard of. Alrighty, let me show you some of the things that I made or got from the retreat. So first I wanted to show you some of the things that I made during my um, Shibori Folds uh, Indigo class. So Shibori is a method where you fold um, fabric and then you place items on the fabric to resist, um, to resist taking up Die. For this class, I brought a few um, a few yards of just regular cotton fabric that I had lying around in my stash, as well as a um, white kind of like beach cover-up kimono um, that I had that was starting to get a little bit grungy um, since I had take, uh, taken it to a couple of festivals. It picked up a lot of clay and dirt and it just didn't look the best, so I kind of figured I might as well, you know, die over and see how I like it. 
Um, and yeah, some of the fabric. So here's one of them. So this one, I actually kind of just rolled up like this and then tied it before I dipped it in. up next is this one here so in order for me to get these um, big rings of color I actually had like uh, you know those glass marbles that you have in you know either the fish tank or like you put it into your planters I actually put them under the fabric and then tied around it with some rubber bands um, before I dipped the fabric and this is kind of what it turned out to be Super cool. I really enjoyed this technique and I definitely think I'll be doing it again. It kind of reminds me of, I don't know, sea urchins or like sand dollars or something. And here is the last one. Um, this one didn't take up the dye as well, but these little tick marks that you see, these little cubes, are actually just um, the marks from the clothespin holding um, the fabric together. Yeah, um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the fabric yet. Probably, you know, maybe a skirt or project bags. Not quite sure yet. I really just wanted to try out the technique and see what I could learn. And then last up was my kimono that I dyed. Um, so this one, I actually dyed with indigo. And then I put it into a red natural dye called cochineal, which is actually ground up bugs. But, um, yeah, it's super cool. Um, it's no longer the grungy white color, which is nice. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I still need to rinse off um, some of the excess dye, which I think will kind of make the tone a little bit more even. Yeah, I'll actually be doing some indigo dyeing myself since I brought home some crystals with me. And I'll make sure to record the setup and everything that I'm using um, when I do so. So look forward to those videos coming soon. So in addition to the Shibori Folds class, I actually did a lot of natural dyeing as well. So like I showed you guys last time, I had a lot of mini skeins uh, made up and I dyed them in various natural dye pots. Um, and the three bases that I had was this kind of beige color, a natural white, and more of a gray. So I dyed one of each um, base in the same natural dye pot to kind of see the subtle variances I could get um, depending on which base I use. So here you see um, my beige skeins, my beige skeins dyed in onion skins, cochineal, and indigo. And here's the same sets but on the white base, okay, and it is dyed in onion skins, cochineal, and indigo as well and if you kind of see them side by side uh, the one with the beige base has a more warm color tone and this is kind of like a more neutral color tone um, so here you go side by side it's a little bit easier to see um, I really like the way 
the beige base actually turned out. I, I prefer warm tones. Um, I think they look better on my skin. Um, so I definitely will be dying with some onion skins again because look how gorgeous this skein is. Um, yeah, really, really neat. Um, and also, um, here is the ba white base next to my gray base. So my gray base. Um, so what happened was the yellow that I dyed on the gray base actually turned out horrendous. I thought it was one of the, it was a really gross yellow. It was kind of, I don't know, like a, a mustardy ness. Um, so I actually dipped it in the indigo um, and got a lovely green out of it. So here are the two skate, uh, the two bases side by side, and with the cochineal, you can see that the um, the gray base has a cooler tone and it's swinging a little bit more, kind of like a dusty mauve versus the white base. And then for the blue, or for the indigos, I mean, um, the gray base looks a little bit more like a, I guess a, a slate blue um, versus the one that's on the white base. Yeah, it was a super, super neat color study. And I have a skein of the gray dyed with Brazil wood. Yeah, so I might be getting into natural dyeing in my near future because, oh my goodness, I love the way these skeins turned out. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, so if you're familiar with dyeing at all, um, you have to pre-mordant your fiber, and I use alum for my pre-mordanting. But yeah, look forward to videos of me attempting to die pretty soon because I'm kind of obsessed now. Up next is another set of skeins that I dyed with the cochineal. I I really like this color, if you guys couldn't tell. Here I have two skeins of, I believe it's Knit Picks Swish DK was the base, it was just a white base, and I dyed it in the cochineal pot. Um, there was a lot of other people using the pots as well, so I actually got this kind of tonal um, plum color and how gorgeous are these skeins um, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna make with them yet but I love them so much look how pretty they're so pretty oh my goodness I can't I can't even can't even um last but not least for my dyeing adventures at Griffin Dye Works we did some acid dyeing on some silk hankies so here's the one that I dyed um, these were not square when we got them, so they kind of look goofy, but here is a sample of how it spun up. Yeah, very pretty. Um, I learned how to properly spin hankies, um, which was something that I had trouble with previously, so it was really nice to have a teacher show me something so simple. Uh, um, so that's kind of like the difference between trying to learn something by yourself or having a teacher show you how to do it, because I tried spinning silk hankies before and failed miserably. And it turns out really, um, the only issue I had was that I was trying to take too many of the layers at one time. Really nice class, really fun. Now I know how to spin silk hankies. So that was all of my dyeing adventures at, at the retreat. Um, up next is kind of all the goodies that I got from it. Um, so I showed you guys the indigo that I picked up. So for the retreat, all the attendees got goodie bags, um, and inside the goodie bags had wonderful things like some stitch markers, um, some yarn samples. This one is from Delicious Yarns, and this is her Two Sweets Erin base, and the colorway is called Oatmeal. How cute is that? And um, we also got a fi fiber sample from Material Culture Fiber Arts, and this is the color that I got. And a lot of flyers and cards and stuff for local producers, dyers, fiber artists, etc. And there was also a raffle during the retreat. So I won this set of delicious yarns. And this is the Layer Cake Cal Kit. And it is 500 yards. And there's a cowl pattern inside. 
And the cow pattern looks similar to like the three color cashmere cow. Look how cute the packaging is. Um, so that's kind of her theme. Um, she had a booth at um, Vogue Knitting Live and everything that she sells is packaged as if there are sweets. There's even a little nutritional um, sheet on the back that kind of describes the yardage and stuff. Um, seriously, top marks on packaging. I love it. Alrighty, so that's everything from my Griffin Dye Works retreat. If you're looking for a retreat that's a little bit more, I don't know, high fashion or has, you know, a ton of, you know, star knitting teachers and such, this isn't that kind of retreat at all. Griffin Dye Works retreat to me feels a lot more like a source of inspiration, um, a little bit of a break away from the city and being surrounded by incredibly passionate people. Um, who have so much knowledge and they just want to share it with you. I will definitely be going back again next year. I had such an amazing time. So and Griffin Dye Works is also hosting a event in the fall um, called Fiber Frolic and it's gonna be in kind of the Sherman Oaks, like Van Nuys area. Um, and it's just a one day event. There'll be a few classes and lots of dyeing as well as a vendor or a small vendor area. So if you guys are interested, definitely keep an eye out on their Facebook event. Um, I'll be linking it in the show notes as well. So that's my extensive retreat uh, recap. Up next is a few of my stash enhancements. So my first stash enhancement that I'm showing you guys, um, I went a little bit uh, crazy uh, when Spun Right Round did their mini skein update. Um, I got a lot of colors, guys. I purchased seven mini skeins, um, but the colors were so gorgeous. I had to get them. I've been I've been stocking her yarn for a long time on Instagram, but I've never purchased any. Um, so since I was going to purchase some, I might as well purchase a lot because you know you know you had to save on shipping, right? So here are the minis that I got. I know, please don't judge me. Um, so first up is Graffiti. Then Buzz. Blender. Clairvoyant. Chimera, glow thingy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of blowing out the camera a little bit. It's really neon. Um, and last but not least is Motion in the Ocean. How cute is that name? Um, and these are all on her um, sumptu sumptuous base, um, which is a seventy five percent merino. 25% nylon, so just a, a sock base. And each of these are 92 yards and 20 grams. How pretty are they? I'm, I'm so excited to add these to my mini skein blanket. I really need to stop buying minis uh, <laughs> realistically here. Um, but yeah, I've never tried out her yarn, so I was excited to start working with them. And then up next, um, in preparation for Tour de Fleece, um, I purchased some new fiber. So Tour de Fleece is a event hosted on Ravelry and the idea is to spin every day that these cyclists are biking during the Tour de France race. And it's really just a, a little bit of a challenge to push yourself to kind of spin every day for about three and a half weeks. Um, I get a lot of stuff done during this month. So I'm on a few teams this year including Team Acreworks which is a 3D printing company um, that supports that produces a lot of fiber related items including 3D printed bobbins um, as well as spindles, lazy cates, and a like a few other. You know. I'm also on my guild spinning team as a co-captain and, um, and team Be Mice Elf. It's my favorite indie fiber dyer um, and she's local to me. Um, I'm a little bit obsessed with her stuff. The first braid that I got from Be Mice Elf is this lovely gradient braid um, and it is in the colorway bikini and it's on a BFL base and it's four ounces. Um, how lovely and squishy is this? I think I will split this braid in half and then spin them each individually um, on two different bobbins and then doing a chain ply. 
That way I'll have two kind of matching uh, skeins of yarn uh, and then maybe make some socks out of them. Who knows? Uh, I make these grandiose plans and I don't always follow through, honestly. Um, but that's kind of the idea that I had for this one. Up next is this lovely braid, um, which is called, this is the Botanic uh, colorway and the base is Polworth and it's also a four ounce braid. I love, love, love Be Myself. I've spun up so much of her fiber and enjoyed every minute of it. Um, to just kind of show you how much I've done. Um, so each of Laura's braids comes with this cute little tag and here's all the tags that I have. I'm a little bit obsessed, um, but I can't, you know, say more good things about her fiber. Um, if you haven't checked her out before, you definitely should. Um, love this stuff and I'm really looking forward to Tour de Fleece. I'll be posting tons of updates on my um, Instagram during Tour de Fleece. Um, so if you want, you can find me there as Petite Weaver. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Tour de Fleece starts tomorrow and it runs through the 24th, I believe. Um, I won't be spinning the first couple days just because I'll be out of town and I won't be able to take my wheel with me. I don't like splitting projects between spindles and wheel, um, so I will be waiting until I get back on the 4th to start my Tour de Fleece. So as I mentioned um, earlier, I met the lovely Tria from Material Culture Fiber Arts um, at the retreat. So I found out Tria was going to be at the retreat on Wednesday, I think it was via Instagram, maybe it was on the Facebook event for the retreat, um, but I remembered that I had some of her yarn in my stash, um, so I wanted to knit up something so that I could show her. Um, so I started a pair of socks. So I casted on socks that night, so that was Wednesday. Yeah, and then I left for the retreat on Thursday afternoon, and luckily I didn't have to drive, so I had tons of knitting time. Um, and throughout the retreat, um, I would knit in the afternoons, um, but I didn't quite finish my socks in time for the end of the retreat, but when I came back on Sunday, I s finished them up. So here it is. I got a pair of knee-high socks. Um, so this pattern is the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern, and that's just a slightly textured um, pattern with just knits and pearls, so really uh, simple stitches. Um, I did this pattern toe up, um, and it's written as a cuff down pattern. Um, what else? Uh, I did a fish lips kiss heel. But yeah, I got a pair of knee highs in five days, guys. Five days. That's all I knitted on, though. I didn't really work on any of the projects while I was at the retreat. Um, yeah, I love Tria's yarn. Um, sorry, this was the Super Bloom colorway on her modern era sock base, which is a merino nylon um, base. Look at those colors. Um, yes, I love, 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 love this yarn. And I actually might have ordered a few more skeins of her yarn. Um, so look forward to seeing those next week. So yeah, these fit super, super well. And I haven't been knitting socks for very long. This is actually my fourth pair of socks. Um, but I finally figured out what's the magic recipe of um, number of stitches, the needles, um, when to add the heel, etc. So with the Fish Lips Kiss Heel Pattern um, by Sock Therapist, she explains how to make a template of your foot. And, uh, and here is mine. Um, so this is the template that I'll be using from now on to make my sock. Because, oh my goodness, this sock fits me perfectly and I'll insert a picture of me wearing the socks here. So that's, so that's all my finished objects. Up next is my works in progress. So after I finished um, my Hermione's Everyday Socks, I cast it on another pair of socks because you can't have empty needles. <laughs> so I just finished my toe increases. And um, this yarn is my skein um, from Dur Durin Dye Works um, that I picked up at Vogue Knitting Live. And it's this lovely neon rainbow. And I'm using this super cute stitch marker that Twee um, from the Twisted Stitches podcast gave me. I do these two at a time. 
toe up, um, 56 stitches, and these are just going to be vanilla socks, um, probably, a, I think I'm going to make a couple of shorty socks out of this skein. Um, I think I can probably squeak out three pairs of shorties out of a skein of yarn. But yeah, they're just really easy to kind of carry around with you in your purse. Look how fun these rainbows are. Up next is my talisman shawl, and this is part of the Shawl Society by Helen Stewart. I'm about 70% done now. And I'm up to, I think, 370 or so stitches. I'm doing this in the large size. So here it is. And, um, here you can kind of see the stitch pattern a little bit more. It's mostly stockinette with um, some star stitches as a textured detail. And this is knit with Knit Picks Hawthorne in their Park Rose colorway. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm almost up to the border detailing and I should be done by next week. Just in time for the next shawl to be released. And it's living in my happy knitting friends project bag that I made and ah, uh, this fabric makes me smile so much every single time I see it. And then last but not least is my cozy memories blanket. I did manage to get a few more squares added this week. The last time I left you guys I was here on this orange square. I added three more. So this square right here is a lovely mini that um, Twee from the Twisted Stitches podcast um, gave me. And then this square right here is my um is the same is the same yarn as my Hermione's everyday socks so that's the material culture fiber arts um yarn in the super bloom colorway so i'm halfway done with row six ah! um i'm a little behind um schedule on this blanket but i'm not going to try to kill myself over it um, my mentality about ongoing projects is that I only work on things that I want to work on. Um, knitting and all the other crafty things that we do is supposed to be a fun thing. It's not supposed to be stressful. Um, so I kind of float from like one project to the other based on what I feel like working on. So yeah, um, that's kind of why I started picking up my cross stitch this week. Um, so yeah, this week I started working a little bit more on a cross stitch project that I got a while back but just never finished. Um, this is the Storytime Sampler by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And um, it's a 12, uh, 12 block pattern and they're all, um, they're all themed with classical stories. Um, so this one is Alice in Wonderland. And then this one's the secret garden and um, these next two blocks that I'm working on um, this one is Sherlock Holmes you can see a little pipe and this one will be the Wizard of Oz I believe so yeah um, you know don't don't be so hard on yourself if you don't finish that project within like whatever arbitrary deadline that you set for yourself like this you know crafts are supposed to be our stress relief and they should be fun <laughs> um, so kind of just work on whatever you feel like working on and you know don't let others give you a hard time for being scatterbrained like I am but yeah I'm really enjoying my cross stitching um, cross stitch is probably my first craft that I ever picked up I found a cross stitch kit at my you know I think fifth grade book fair and I had to have it so that's where my obsession with crafting began so yeah, I think that's it for me this week. Um, thank you so much, you guys, for joining me, and uh, apologies for a slightly longer episode this week. As always, you can find me on um, Instagram, Robbery, and Periscope as Petite Weaver, and um, you can find the show notes down below on my blog at petiteweavercrafts.blogspot.com, or join us on the Robbery group, Petite Weaver Crafts, um, and I post the show notes there as well. Have a wonderful 4th of July weekend, you guys, if you're from the U.S., and I will see you guys next week. Thanks. Bye.